In this movie, we begin one of the most critical sections on knowing so that you can save yourself some time, significant time, when you're working on your files, and that is how to effectively use styles and saving styles as you work on a project. What styles allow you to do, in a nutshell, is to create certain looks, including fills and line weights and special effects, and then start applying those to shapes that you draw later, objects that you draw later. This ensures consistency across character development, ensures consistency in background development. Everything you could want to do is much faster, and not only is it much faster to create, it is much faster to change across your entire project. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Later on, something we'll be working on is kind of a frog animation. And let's look at how we may apply styles to something like that. I am going to start with just a basic shape. You can start styles without having a single shape on the drawing table, if you like. I like to have something in front of me. There's many ways as we start getting into development that you'll probably customize yourself to your own needs. But I'll show you how I do it just because it's something that's worked for me. Pressing the keyboard shortcut L, We'll go ahead and draw a basic circle. It comes in with the defaults, which is black outline and white fill, although I don't believe there's a fill yet. I'm going to convert this to a shape so we can see the inside. That's great. And I'll do Q now to select the shape. Let me go back to U, select that, and, and hit the space bar to validate that. So now we've got it filled in there. What I want to do is now create a new style. This has been highlighted. I'm going to come down to Styles on the pull-down area and do New. It'll ask for a name, and I'll do Frog Skin 1. Now let's go ahead and come back to our object here. We still have the Shape Selection tool activated, keyboard shortcut Q. And we'll select this so it's live now. I'm going to come down to Applied Styles and choose Frog Skin 1. What this will enable me to do is now I can come up to the styles. I can select frog skin one up here and I can work on it and see it dynamically update over here without having to continually reselect this object. That is the beauty of styles. Whether I have one or 100 items in my scene, as I work and change the actual source style, all those objects will update dynamically right in front of your eyes. To ensure that I can see as much as possible, I do have every feature enabled in the display views. Let's go ahead and start changing some things here. I want a base color, and I don't want the base color to be white. Since we're dealing with frogs, of course, I'll pick something in the green category and something kind of a green, neutral, not too dark, not too light. We can see it updating to our left there. Now for the effects, I would like to create a little more organic type of variation. So I'm going to choose Splotchy. Splotchy is a tool that will kind of dynamically increase and decrease, just using some mathematic functions, the lightness and darkness of the colors. The magnitude is how aggressive that is. Right now it's at 24. I'll change that to 50 so it becomes even more obvious. Let me come back and click on our little ellipsis, those three dots. I didn't mean to make that go away quite so fast. The scale is how the appearance of this is, right now it's at 32, if I change this to 50 and instead of hitting the return key I'll hit the tab key this time, we can see that the effect is much larger right now. I may actually want to bring this down to something like 10. I'll press the tab key again and we get a little more of this maybe wrinkly characteristic there. Currently it's monochromatic. We can make it work with multiple colors if we want and you know I think I will this time. We'll select OK. We can add another effect right here if we want to. At this point, I'll wait and see if we want to do that later. For the line color, I'll want a dark surrounding line, which is kind of a comic, or I should say animated feature norm to create edges. So we'll pick something down in the darker green category, select OK. For the line width, I do want this to be a little bit heavier, so let's pick something like 10, hit the tab key. The wonderful thing is, is that you get a live preview that updates. You don't have that checkerboard pattern showing you what's going on there. Now, let's add a brush to this and create a little more variation. I'll grab one of our organic brushes here and select OK. And that has been updated. Pretty neat. But you're thinking, didn't we assign splotchy? How come I'm not seeing that? Some of the more sophisticated, actually all the more sophisticated fill styles that you see, will not 
update and show correctly while you're in animate. The only way you can actually see those as we learned in the brushes is to actually render the file out to see everything that's going on. So I'll go ahead and do command R on the Mac. It will be control R on the PC to render. And we get a little bit of a preview of what that looks like. I'll close that and I want to go ahead and change my project settings right now so we get a better view of what's going on instead of that little tiny preview. We'll go to 640 by 480. When we render again, now our shape is much easier to see. Let's go ahead and start adding a little more sophistication and then start expanding this across multiple shapes that we could potentially be building our character out of. If I want to add another effect, I do that at this time. I can do that in this case by say, let's add gradient. And we'll change this to maybe a lighter green. Let me bring up our color picker. Maybe something in this area. And then for the darker color, I can go ahead and say, well, let's pick something a little more down there and do OK. Well, we haven't seen an update. So we would need to render this to see exactly what's going on. And we can tell now that the render has kind of corrupted the splotchiness that we want. In our next movie, we'll take a look at how we can deal with some of these issues and then extend it to multiple objects.